Hey everybody, this is example number four for a foundation design for shallow foundations. The problem statement that we have is we have a concentric vertical load of 15 kips per, per feet per foot and a moment load of 10 kips per foot. They're applied to a five and a half foot wide, five and a half feet wide continuous footing. The ground water table is at a depth of 50 feet and we're asked to calculate the maximum and minimum bearing pressure. So here's our uh, figure with our moment load of 10 kip foot per feet and, and our vertical load of 15 kip per feet. And here's the width is 5.5 5 feet over here of our continuous foundation. And the, the distance from the ground surface to the bottom of this ground surface to the bottom of the foundation is 1.75 uh, feet the ground surface. So the first thing we need to do is calculate the weight of the foundation. Um, since, this is, since this is a continuous footing, we're going to express the applied loads as a force per unit length. So the weight of the foundation is going to be equal to the width, uh, which is 5.5 feet, multiplied by the, the thickness or the height you can say is 1.75 feet and then multiply that by the unit weight of the concrete which is about 150 pounds per feet cubed so our, un uh, so our, so our weight per unit length uh, per unit uh, length is 1443.75 pounds per feet next we need to calculate the eccentricity because we have this moment this overturning moment we have to calculate the eccentricity of the bearing pressure because we're going to have a non-uniform bearing pressure it will not be a uniform distribution so the eccentricity is going to be equal to the moment divided by the sum of the vertical load plus the uh, sum of the vertical load and the weight of the foundation so our moment is 10,000 foot pounds per foot divided by 15,000 pounds per foot plus 1,000 uh, plus the weight of the foundation is 1,443.75 pounds per foot. So our eccentricity is point, uh, 0 0.608. So this tells us that if we were to replace our entire bearing stress distribution by a resultant force, it will be eccentric. It will be, it would be the eccentricity would be 0 0.608 feet. So that's going to be something like this but before that uh, before going back to the figure let's uh, calculate the pore water pressure and we don't really need to calculate the pore water pressure because in the problem statement the ground water table is at a depth of 50 feet so in our case the distance from the ground surface to the bottom of the foundation is 1.75 feet which is smaller than the distance from the, ground, uh, from the ground surface to the ground water table of 50 feet. So this tells us that our pore water pressure at the bottom of the foundation is zero. Next, we calculate a value um, which is very important. It's B over 6, which is the width divided by 6. So 5.5 feet divided by 6. So this value will tell us what type of distribution we have. Do we have a trapezoidal distribution or do we have a triangular distribution? So we compare this, this B over 6 value to our E, the eccentricity. So E, which is equal to 0 0.608, it's less than uh, B over 6. So this tells us that we have a, pr uh, a pressure bearing pressure distribution which is trapezoidal so which means that if we were to draw the pressure distribution it would be something like this we would have excuse me it will look something trapezoidal distribution it would be like this Okay, so, and also the, another reason why B over 6, this value, we have to compare the eccentricity to the, uh, to the B over 6 value is because E, when we're trying to design this foundation, we want to keep E to be less than or equal to B over 6 because this will maintain, this criteria maintains compressive stress along the entire base area. So if E is greater than B over 6, that means we'll have one part of the foundation will be lifting up 
and the other part will be settling. So we try to avoid this. That's why we try to, you want to keep the eccentricity less than B over 6. So which is the case in our, which is the case in our problem. So now we can calculate the minimum and maximum bearing pressure. The minimum bearing pressure here is a formula. It's going to be the vertical load plus the weight of the foundation divided by the width minus the pore water pressure times 1 minus 6 times the eccentricity divided by the width. So all we do is just plug in the numbers. 15,000 uh, pounds per foot plus 1,000 1,443.75 pounds per foot divided by 5.5 feet minus zero, the pore water pressure, and then multiply that by one minus six times the eccentric eccentricity, which is 0.61, divided by the width of 5.5 feet. So this gives us a minimum bearing pressure of 1,006.3 pounds per foot squared. So this tells us that the minimum uh, in this trapezoidal distribution will be here, 1,006.3. And then we can also calculate the maximum bearing pressure. So it's exactly the same as the previous formula with the exception that instead of 1 minus 6, six times E over B, it's 1 plus 6 times E over B, 6 times eccentricity over B. So again, we just plug in the numbers and the maximum bearing pressure is equal to 4,973.24 pounds per foot squared, 4,973.24. So it's going to be here, 4,973.24. So this is the end of this example. I also made a spreadsheet for this example. Um, everything in yellow is inputs. Everything else is outputs. I'll post this on the website at engineeringexamples.net. Please subscribe to the channel and also uh, like, like our Facebook page at facebook.com slash engineering examples. Thanks.